During archaeological excavations, 45 Roman collars with inscriptions were discovered. On these symbols of slavery, inscriptions have been preserved with a warning that the slave is prone to escape and the name of his master. But there was no information on the collars about how the slave was treated. The best preserved slave collar is Zoninos. On it in Latin letters was written, I ran away. Catch me. If you return me to Mr. Zoninos, you will be paid one solid. In the Roman Empire in the 4th century, a solid was a gold coin. Thus, such a warning clearly indicated that the slave wearing this collar had either escaped earlier or had a tendency to escape. The payment of one gold coin for a returned slave shows its value to the citizens of Rome. It can be used to judge the nature of Roman society, where people were more likely to return property to the owner and receive remuneration for it. Now let's talk in more detail about this collar. This slave collar is the only perfectly preserved collar with a tag attached with iron wire. It can be considered a clear example of the existence of urban slavery during the Christian Roman Empire. All the details of this collar give an important clue to the understanding of human life in Roman slavery. The collar is made of bronze and iron. The collars of the slaves were of different sizes, but they sat on the neck quite tightly. Tags were usually forged from bronze. Their shape was rounded so as not to injure the slave wearing the collar. The collar was a ring made of iron wire, made in such a way that it could not be removed. The slave had to wear it for the rest of his life. This collar was heavy and stiff, which was quite cruel to the prisoner. The Zoninus collar is unique in that it has an inscription offering a reward for the return of an escaped slave. According to historians, not all slaves wore such collars. They were worn only by those who tried to escape, escaped, and were caught. On some slave collars, there were inscriptions where the slave refused to disobey and evade duties. Often, there was a request on the collars to return the slave to the master, for example, bring me back. Escaped slaves were punished not only in the form of a collar, most of them had tattoos on their faces. This was a sign for future slave owners that the slave was prone to escape and evade the duties assigned to him. Thus, the owners of runaway slaves tried to demoralize other slaves by suppressing their desire to gain freedom by fleeing. It also served as a warning that a slave was just property and nothing more. As on the Zoninos, the name of the owner was often indicated on the collar as well as his address. This helped to return the escaped slave to the slave owner. The Romans considered slaves illiterate and therefore unable to realize the danger of outgoing information that hung around their necks. Zoninus was quite strict, but not all collars were like that. During the excavations of Roman landfills and sewers, archaeologists have found a large number of examples of slave collars. In addition to heavy non-removable collars, there were also those that could be removed. Some of them were broken, most likely by slaves who achieved freedom. The non-removable heavy collars were a warning to anyone who bought such a naughty slave and to the prisoner who wore it. The slave collar was a symbol of eternal slavery in the Christian Roman Empire of the 4th century. According to the slave collars, modern scientists were able to understand how Roman citizens treated the people they kept in captivity. In any Roman house, there were slaves, which were several times more than the owners. Therefore, in order to keep them in obedience, the slaveholders took such harsh measures. 
the masters, were always in suspense that the slaves might rebel against them. Zoninus and similar callers are a vivid reminder of the brutal reality of life in the Roman Empire. The state was not only dependent, but was also afraid of its slaves. In order to survive, Rome did everything possible to preserve the slave system, keeping its prisoners in a tight grip. According to some historical sources, about a third of all the inhabitants of Rome were slaves. Slaves were the main labor force that brought profit in trade, entertained and served the Romans, engaged in crafts and construction, cultivated fields and filled brothels. The Romans believed that without slaves there would be no empire, but the slaves themselves did not want to put up with this state of affairs. They often staged uprisings. Information about three major revolts of Roman slaves has reached our days, the first of which was the Eunuch War. This uprising took place in 135, 132 BC. The second uprising was raised by Salvius Trifon in 104, 100 BC. The third, most famous slave war in Rome took place in 73.71 BC under the leadership of Spartacus. All the uprisings were organized by slaves who escaped from their masters. In the Roman Empire, the flight of slaves was common, so wearing collars like Zoninus did not surprise anyone. The owner had to post information about his living object, which indicated the character of the slave and his tendency to escape. According to Roman law, the purchase could be considered invalid if the seller did not specify the characteristics of the slave. The flight of slaves created problems for large landowners and business owners. Therefore, whole structures were created to search for and return slaves. Even magicians were doing this, selling spells to both slaveholders and runaway slaves themselves. Slaves bought lead amulets on which texts were written from their location. Although the collars of the slaves were quite rough and heavy, it was not the harshest punishment for the fugitives. Captured slaves were often flogged and beaten in public, as well as branded with a hot iron.